So Elliot, I know you've done some work on protocolizing inpatient care of patients with cirrhosis. And how do you um, and your team at, in, in Michigan take care of um, hepatic encephalopathy patient? And what recommendations might you have for providers out there who are not in a transplant center, who don't have hepatologists yeah. specialized care? Yeah, I think the key thing is that if you're coming to a well-oiled machine like Northwestern Hospital, uh, when you come in, you're going to get that four-pronged approach uh, to care, and, um, uh, and the patients are more often than not likely to be very well served. And the typical experience that we see is that someone presenting with pure hepatic encephalopathy ought to wake up very quickly. You know, so in my, when I was uh, a few years ago, I had noticed that some, some nurses were independently requesting additional doses of lactulose in the throes of overt encephalopathy, and their patients were waking up and going home earlier. Anecdotally, uh, but uh, what we decided to do was to protocolize the care of hepatic encephalopathy. And what that does is it helps you in a context where you might not have a hepatologist on staff or where the house staff are rotating in and out and often like these templated notes about what to do for a given uh, situation. So we gave a lot of lactulose up front and we started Rifaximin early, not because we would expect it to impact uh, in hospital changes, but, we, but for two reasons. One is that oftentimes there's the work of prior approval that must be done prior to the patient's discharge. And two, the episode of care for hepatic overt hepatic encephalopathy does not end at the time of discharge because these patients have a risk of readmission that can exceed 30 to 40 percent. And you have to do everything that you can to take the data that uh, Dr. Flam and his colleagues gave us to reduce that uh, risk of another episode. Uh, and starting that therapy in hospital is one of the best ways to make sure it gets done as an outpatient. Steve, how effective is lactulose and rifaximin at preventing those episodes, preventing rehospitalization? So, again, another great question, Arun. You know, this study, this pivotal study that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine in March of 2010 was a very well done study, which is why it was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. And the first, the primary outcome metric was recurrence of hepatic encephalopathy in these high risk patients. Again, just to remind the audience, lactulose and rifaximin versus lactulose and placebo, 90% of the patients. The other 10% or so were rifaximin versus placebo because they weren't on lactulose. And in this six month period, the reduction in recurrence of encephalopathy in the rifaximin group compared to placebo was 58%, and it was highly statistically significant. This is a pretty remarkable reduction in a relatively short amount of time for a very, very bad thing. Keeping in mind that rifaximin really, again, had no difference side effect wise compared to placebo. Uh, so that was the primary outcome measure. Now the secondary outcome measure, there were many, but the most important one I would submit was hospitalizations related to encephalopathy, not just having encephalopathy, which was the primary outcome. And the reduction in hospitalizations regarded to encephalopathy was 50%. Again, highly statistically significant. Again, a remarkable outcome with rifaximin for prophylaxis in a high-risk group. And consequently, this was adopted by the guidelines, which I mentioned earlier were published in late 2014, and really is now the standard of care around the world. In patients that have had encephalopathy, they should be maintained on rifaximin, usually with lactulose, because the study had most of the patients treated that way, for prevention of recurrence. Is it perfect? No. There were patients that still had recurrence and still were hospitalized, but there was a marked reduction, and that should be the standard. And I, I do want to mention one last thing. That's not happening a lot around, the, I shouldn't say a lot. It's not happening enough around the nation in the United States. There are data to suggest that patients who should be on rifaximin for prophylaxis are not for one reason or another. And 
we in the healthcare field who take care of these patients, hospitalists, primary care doctors, gastroenterologists, must, to optimize care for our patients, treat these types of patients the way they should with, with, with a standard of care, and that would include rifaximin. Any thoughts, Elliot? Yeah, so I, just, I second that uh, entirely. You know, after that pivotal randomized trial, there have been two observational studies, one from my center as a result of our, our protocol and another from England, which was a multi-center uh, study of before and after the use of rifaximin. And in both of those studies, you see an adjusted 40% reduced reduction in the rate of readmission. You know, readmissions are one of the worst things that can happen to a patient and to a hospital. Uh, but cirrhosis is almost unique in a way in that there's a, there's, is there's a pill to, to reduce the risk of readmission. And uh, that doesn't mean everybody has, should be on rifaximin, right? But it means that people who are at risk for readmission uh, should be on the optimal therapy for hepatic encephalopathy, which in my opinion includes teaching an adequate dosing of their lactulose and co-therapy with rifaximin. One other point I would add is uh, something we've been doing in New York is trying to increase the amount of medicines that make it to the patient's bedside before discharge. Because as you alluded to before, Elliot, that, you know, talking about the transitions of care to prevent these patients from coming back to the hospital is so important. So if we could give the patient not only the education, but all of the tools and the things that they're going to need to be at home in order to prevent a readmission, such as bringing the medicines to the bedside, showing the caregivers how to use it, giving them a medication list, getting, making sure that all of those prior authorizations and things are taken care of before the patient leaves the hospital is one of the important points of, of making sure that Rifaximin is going to be able to do its job. Absolutely. So secondary prophylaxis of these episodes is of paramount importance, right? So being on the right therapy, making sure the patient actually has the medication, knows how to take it properly.